What's up everybody? Today's game I've been thinking a long time how to actually make the introduction, what to say and how to describe the game that you are now about to see and I couldn't come up with anything. Nothing really does the game justice and what you're about to see right now is probably the craziest quick match on Haunted Mines that was ever played on Battle.net. So guys without further ado let's jump right into the game, have fun, this is a match that you will not forget. All right, welcome everybody to the craziest quick match that you have ever seen in, in your entire life. This is a game that I got sent by a pretty good player, actually. And uh, while well, we're going through that game in just a few seconds, but as you can already see, introducing the team to the left, Team Blue on our Haunted Mines game. It is Claw on Nova. We have Tony on Tyrael, Juggle on the Sylvanas, and Bankai, apparently Bleach fan, is playing Vala here with Easy on Abatha. To the right side, the red team with a carry Again, starting here around there is playing the hero. We have Bokian on Nuburak, Drizden on Sylvanas, Xantippe on Murky. Yes, there's a Murky in the game, and Wolfie on Vala. A Haunted Mines game, and actually the last few Haunted Mines games that I've casted were really a whole lot of fun. But this game, as I said, it was a quick match, but this game is all kinds of crazy. You're definitely not going to regret tuning into this one. So guys, get ready for some absolutely insane and epic action. At this point, we're having the blue team up to the top lane. Tony is already rocking the pick here. I like it. Abatha jumping in, trying to help his buddy out there. Bokini all the way up at the front, and they just get away in the last second. Once again, it is that traditional split with four heroes at the top lane for the red team. The blue team trying to just defend against Sylvanas because, well, she is a great pushing hero and on this map in particular she's extremely strong so they want to make sure that they don't lose too many towers here. The builds, as you can already see, we're going to talk about them in a second, are a bit, a bit special. Tony in trouble! Oh, and the first blood here for the red team. Tyrael not getting away in time and he is the first victim in the series. So right now let's find out how the blue team is going to plan to enter those mines because this is not starting out well for them. Sylvanas with the pressure at the top lane around there and his Kerrigan already doing some work. And we're still having Abatha revealing the position of Nova. Nova not too happy about that. Moving back already. But Kerrigan missing the stun and therefore for now Nova gets away, even gets the snipe in there. Talking a bit about the builds, we're having at this point Nova going for the 20% uh, increased range in the cooldown reduction. Once again, this was a quick match, so the builds are going to be a bit more individual. A big oh, oh, Bankai is moving back in the last second. But yeah, the builds are going to be a bit more creative, a bit more individual, and you can already see that with the lack of a real healer and support on uh, the team uh, in blue, we're having on Tyrell Regeneration Master. So the teams will have to adapt a bit to what's going on there. Merc hit the bot lane, already killed, but around there is going up against Sylvanas! Claw, where is that snipe? Where is that snipe, dude? There it is! Takes down Kerrigan, but the counter kill by Wolfie against Sylvanas. Oh, it looks like they're seeing, yeah, Nova gets the kill against Vala, but then she dies as well. Three kills per team basically already, but down in the mines, we're currently having Bankai taking the first few skulls for the blue team, and everybody is just spreading out at this point. And a more traditional build on the side of our Sylvanas here with the, with the wind talent on level one, and well, what is she going to pick up on level four? I suppose we're going to see in Venom here, which is of course a great talent for her to take, especially entering those mines. The first few mines are the important ones and that happens usually on the level 4 talent, therefore you want to make sure that you get the most out of that. We're having Kerrigan with an Venom 2, we're seeing the red team already heading straight for the boss at this point, going straight for that. But here comes Tony, Bankai and Kerrigan, they're sniping Murky out of the picture already. Murky of course with Living the Dream, the new talent introduced in this particular patch, is amazing for him. Wolf becoming it from the completely wrong angle and vaulting straight into Bala, take it down already. Ready. Sylvanas taking him out and there goes, oh my god, Sylvanas, Kerrigan and Nova die for Kini, oh, and he dies to a nearly complete wipe against the red team, 6.5 kills against 4 and that went really well in favor of the blue team, apparently they didn't expect that either, Abatha was starting to do his thing here. And that really worked well for him. Tony here announcing that he doesn't really feel it these days because he's been having a bit of a break. And of course he was a player for Team Ace. I don't think that he's with the team right now. He actually played for Kuna Matata, one of those teams that we had on the YouTube channel in the recent past. But they kind of changed their team name the entire time. We're having Abatha 
Of course, going for a build that focuses around the pressurized glands on level 1, but if you can uh, look at the level 4 talent, prolific dispersal, not really something that you see too much, but it gets a lot of nests into the game. And that can be pretty epic if you're trying to lay those uh, yeah, those traps which we see up there. So if Dristen walks up into that trap, he's going to have a pretty tough time. 70 skulls against 30 at this point. Oh, Nova needs to be careful that she doesn't run into a Nubarak, who, by the way, went for a full build build so far. Didn't go for the traditional Nubarak build that we usually see, but instead focused on level 1 on the Assault Scarab, and on level 4 then on the Legion of Beetles. Level 7 hitting a bit faster for the blue team now. They have the stronger Golem as well, and they're starting to push this in. Wolfie is playing a very, very aggressive Vala, and he went for a full arrow build so far, with the puncturing arrow and the sifting arrow chosen. We see that a bit more often these days. Oh! Overextends completely at the full doesn't really get back to safety behind the gate and gets dropped here. Vala really, uh, yeah, being maybe a bit too far out in the last few fights here. With a level 7 talent on the blue team, on the other hand, we're seeing now the explosive round for Nova. Usually you would see the, uh, well, the anti-armor shells here and on level 4 then gathering power, which Nova didn't get. Instead, we're having the remote delivery in her case. Once again, I want to remind everybody that this was still on a pretty high level, but it was definitely a quick match, so people are experimenting with a couple of builds here. And we'll see how exactly this is going to turn out, especially, of course, in the late game. But for now, the blue team is applying a lot of pressure here. They're doing really well. And the red team is just trying to take that golem down. And they finally succeed. They lost an entire fort already. The blue team is about to head into level 9. Up to the top, only the wall was scratched, taken out. We're having another Scarab Talon taken here for Nubarak, who's going for the Leeching Scarabs. On the side of Kerrigan, it's more the traditional build that we see here with Sweeping Grace on level 1 and Venom and then Battle Momentum and Kerrigan is already jumping in around there as there. Dristen is going in with the Sylvanas as well and Tony is in trouble. Tony! Tony is dead once again. Four heroes against him, Murky being one of them. Xantippe here on his Murky just using the Puffer Fish build of course which can do extreme amount of damage once that you have the Octocap talent. Very nice snipe here from Claw. In this case, the little one talent that he chose actually working out really well for him with the extended range. He gets the kill against Kerrigan here. We're having a bit of an adjustment on the side of the red team with Sylvanas. They chose on level 4 the Haunting Wave so they can recharge the uh, Withering Fire charges that you have on the hero. More traditional what we are seeing on the side of the blue team and Venom taken here, but both players decided to go for with a wind on level 1 and then on level 7 with a follow through talent. So at this point, Vala also going for the Cal drops here, which are being taken, at least the Vala for the uh, red team. On the team for the blue, we have the repeating arrow being uh, reset. An interesting choice to go for Arsenal regardless. Oh, Yogurt, where is he going? Like he's running towards the blue, the red team's base. They already lost Sylvanas and Kerrigan. They lose Murky as well but at least with those two heroes, they're able to take down Sylvanas here. At this point already, just seven minutes into the game, we have ten kills against six. So a very aggressive game between the two teams here. You can really see that a lot of these players are going full YOLO when it comes to the aggression. Once again, a tower dropping up at the top. And Abathur doing a pretty decent job so far, picking up the monstrosity here on level 10. Oh, and up to the bot lane. It is once again an Uberak being attacked here. Does he still have the Poro charge? It doesn't look like it. Oh, turns around and gets killed. 12 kills against 6 already in the blue team once again with the pressure. The Wailing Arrow on level 10, no surprise. We have Judgment taken. Vala is dropped at the top lane. and We're seeing the players just jump between the top and the bottom, especially Tony is trying to get a bit more damage in with Abathur that he's currently using here. Oh, he finds Kerrigan, but he gets stun locked and Dristen is going in as well. Abathur jumping back in, trying to help him out here. He gets away for now. The Wailing Arrow on Dristen is trying to apply some damage, but he gets away. At the same time, down in the mines, we're having Yugel and uh, Bankai trying Trying to get the first few skulls for the team. By now we also have level 10 for the red team. We use Wailing Arrow, Octo Grab. They have Strafe on Vala. Same for the blue team, by the way. And over here. Oh, Bokini missing. Missing the Boro. And he might die. He has already and Venom. Three heroes chasing him. But Kerrigan jumping in with Maelstrom. Yugel already moving back here. Dristen is on the way now too. Kerrigan in trouble as the Strafe from Bankai comes in. Takes down Kerrigan. Oh, but a double kill here. Sylvanas dead, we have Anubarak dead, both Sylvanas are actually dying and that Murky is just everywhere at once, dying every single time. Wolfie, the really aggressive Vala from the early game, is the only one who's still alive. <laughs> oh, 
Tony with the attempt to judgment in, but Bala gets away. The cult drops helping out, and she immediately turns around with the strafe, but Tony kills her regardless. 17 kills against 7 in this game already. Murky dying once again. And this is one of those scenarios where as Nova you are really sad that you didn't pick up Gathering Power because Murky kills, yes, they count towards Gathering Power. So you will run around with 6 stacks, more, or with your 5 stacks most of the game. 46 skulls against 24, but we still don't have all of the heroes in the mines now. And the red team is moving in again with 3. They're trying to take down Tony here. Tony very much alone since Claw just decided that he doesn't really want to fight this fight. The odds are against him and he just says like, well, listen up, Tony, you're on your own here on your Tyrael. Here comes the Octo Grab and goodbye, Tyrael. Yogel needs to be careful as well. He gets stunned already. Vala dying first, though, for the blue team, but it is an Uberak who fights the dust right away after that. Uh, the problem is that now Nova is also extremely low here and apparently Xandip decides for now to go for Sylvanas instead. They're moving in already. Oh, nice! Abathur moves there! And together with Nova, they get the kill. And this is just like, this is a slugfest, ladies and gentlemen. Kills left, right, bottom and center the entire time. And Uberak dead, Sylvanas dead to the left side for the blue team. We're having Bala down too. And Kerrigan somehow survives. We still see Abathur with his copy moving in here with the ultimate evolution. Wolfie down to in the mines together with Kerrigan. Might finally be able to get a few skulls at that big golem there. We're having by now 19 kills against 10. Level 14 versus level 13 and we're 10 minutes into the game. Level 13 talents are of course available to the players now as we see Claws as Nova trying to de-push the top lane. Down here it's only Wolfie. Bokini is moving in now as well as the talent on 13. We're having, by the way, we have Reciprocrate on uh, Tyrael on uh, the shield build basically for Tyrael on uh, level 13 and on level 7. Once again it's the evasive fire for both of the Sylvanas players whereas both of the Nova uh, Bala players are going for the frost shot. The range attack on Abathur, great talent if you want to back to your opponent's structures. We've seen it several times, but down here is once again the immediate initiation. Tony taking down Kerrigan even before she can use Maelstrom. Bunker is just barely getting away there, but here comes the triple tap as Claus is trying to take down Wolfie. He gets the kill, but at the same time they are losing another one. The jump in takes down an Uberak. And it looks like Sylvanas is not going to make it either. 23 kills against 11. And they're going for the boss. Finally trying to get those additional skulls. The Burning Rage talent was taken to level 13 by Anubarak. Whereas of course Murky focuses more and more on the Pufferfish build that he has there. Going straight for that again. And finally the next boss or the next golem is going to appear on the map. Down here we have Abatha still trying to get into position. He's been doing a pretty nice, uh, decent game so far. I'm not quite sure if the mines really worked out the way that he wanted. But at the same time he was always able to jump in. Oh! <laughs> Abatha! Abatha with a suicide. I don't know what you want to call that. He, there's no way he saw that pufferfish. Walks right into the pufferfish and just dies. Triple blood for blood, by the way, at this point in time now for the blue team. They really have quite a lot of burst damage now with that talent. 76 skulls on the blue team, 24 on the red, and the red team, of course, is just trying to defend at least for now. We have no healer in this game, as you might have realized already, which is one of the reasons why we're seeing Tony go straight for the Regeneration Master here. But this is definitely starting to become a bit of an issue and probably triggered also the Valas to go for the Siphoning Arrow here on level 1. 16 versus 15, Abatha still dead, Nova is also down, and once again the boss is starting to do his thing. The egg in the back on the bot lane here for Murky. Murky healing up at the well and starting to move in with another puffer, puffer fish, trying to dish out the damage there, and he does quite a lot at this point. The boss is nearly dead already, with Abatha missing in the fight and Nova also out of the picture. Didn't really do too much, didn't even break the entire wall down. 13 kills against 24, a 13 minute game so far here on Haunted Mines and things are of course starting to get a bit nasty here. With a level 17 talent versus level 16, we see the talent here just coming into play right now for the red team. They're trying to get double blood for blood already, they're moving in as we speak. The cold embrace as well, nice silence here by the red team Silvanas and they're moving in already. But the first hero dies in Uberak, Vala dies a second later. Here comes the triple tap from Claus, he's trying to stay, he takes down Mur 
Bunky, he nearly kills Sylvanas. Sylvanas is the only hero that is able to get away. Bunka was trying to move in with another vault on Vala and maybe getting the kill with an additional... Oh, 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 Murky dying now as well. His egg just too far out was detected and they were able to eliminate him too. 27 kills against 14. Now Tyrael dying quite a lot here. The talents, by the way, on level 60. Now the crippling shot on the side of Nova and we're having envenomed spikes for Abatha as the blue team is once again continuing their dominance on the map. Two levels ahead right now, and they're really showing the red team how this game is being played, at least for now. We're having the puffer fish talent again taken on 16 for Murky, and at the same time for Bala, we're seeing uh, the tumble taken. No blood for blood. They could have had four blood for bloods in total if they decided to take those talents on Vala and Sylvanas, but they apparently decided against it. That would have been very, very tricky to deal with. You can really tell how much the extra damage blood for blood does when you focus down on a target, especially Anubarak has already taken a lot of damage thanks to that. We're having the uh, mines opening up in another 20 seconds, but the blue team is out for blood once again. They're jumping in, they're trying to take them down here. Kerrigan, Kerrigan, they're going for Nova, and Nova is dead already, but Kerrigan about to die too. She goes down, a kill for a kill at this point, up to the top. Tony is very low, Abathur is trying to help out as much as he can, and he kills Vala, he kills Vala, but he dies a second later. Down here, we're having Sylvanas killing Sylvanas, the blue team prevails again. Xantip, on the other hand, he wants to go in for another move against the blue team. Sylvanas doesn't get close enough. We're having Nubarak just barely escaping here. And right now there's only four heroes alive on the map. There's just mines everywhere. Abatha is so damn annoying at this point. But we have Yugo moving in trying to take the skulls now. He's leading with a wave and goes straight for the skulls thanks to the withering arrow. He's able to get those shots in. 30 kills already against 16. This game has been a slugfest. One of the craziest quick matches so far already. I mean, without a healer in the game, you can expect a lot of heroes to die, but this is getting a bit crazy. Right now, we're having skulls taken at the bot lane. Murky is moving in as well. The blue team is doing really well so far. Bankai, of course, with another multi shot com, can move up to the top and collect even more skulls for his team. Here comes Santip, on the other hand, was apparently trying to land an Octo Grab here. Has the talent available. Needs to wait for the puffer fish, though. And down to the bottom lane. What do you have here? Bukini is moving in. Yogil needs to be extremely careful. Up to the top, Dristan running straight into the mines and he gets sniped. Sylvanas is down and Wolfie, there comes the strafe. Nova is starting to move in as well, but a quick ball with the Cal drops is helping him to get away here. Ah, uh, Bokini on the other hand, he's in trouble and Uberak. Octo grab and the kill against Vala, but this is not the end of it. Once again, the Pufferfish in position and around there is trying to lock down another target. All alone in the mines is Tony on his pick and he's riding up to the top. He just barely missed the other two heroes and they're playing the elevator game already. Tony with uh, Abathur is trying to charge in, uses his judgment to stun out Kerrigan. But here comes once again Bala with a stray, but the kill against Kerrigan. They get the kill off. Vala is trying to play that elevator game once again. Moves back with a ball. Tony is moving in straight into the cal drops. Gets slowed by multi shot once more. Wolfie, is he going to get away? It looks like it. Abathur is there with a the shield, but he can't get the spike in to unhorse Wolfie. 17 kills against 34. Twice the amount of kills on the blue team already. And this is getting not only a little bit crazy, but like very, very crazy. Up to the top, another snipe, and Bala barely! Oh, it looked for a second like she would be able to get away, but no, Nova gets the kill. Down to the bot lane, or at least in the mines, we're having Tony going for additional skulls. The blue team already has 60 of those. We're having Dristan moving up against Nova once more, but can't reveal her since the haunting wave did hit. The blue team's Sylvanas move down to the bot lane to help out Tony, and he needs help. But up here at the top entrance, this is where things are starting to become a bit real for the blue team heroes. Santip is the only one moving away there. Uses the safety bubble once again. <laughs> Triple tap against him. I mean, with a level 20 talent, as long as you get the kill, it's all good. Level 20 talent already for the blue team, and we're having fast reloads. Yeah, Tyrion dies, and again a kill by Claus. 
very well done here. They get the kill against Silvanas. Vala already killed out earlier. And the snipe against Makini. Really well done here. Kill after kill after kill. The blue team certainly delivers. We're having hardened shield taken on Tyriel. A double bolt of the storm. And the evolutionary link on Abathur, which is going to help him out, of course, a lot in those fights. Murky, on the other hand, if he gets the level 20 talent, then uh, with Rewind, he can do a lot of dirty things here. Santipa, Wolfie, and around there are trying to defend against that boss. And well, with 84% on the boss, 84 skulls, this looks and a level 20 talent available. This looks like the blue team should be able to really do a lot of damage and maybe even finish out the game. But they are lacking Tyriel and Sylvanas. Both of them got killed. Both of them doesn't get a chance to really move in to help that boss out. But that keep is definitely going to fall. Here comes the level 20 talent, and we have, we have actually the additional Octograph talent here. We don't see the Rewind or anything else taken on Murky, but it is Nexus Frenzy on Vala. The Ball of the Storm on Carrigan, Hard Shield on Nubarak, that should help him because he didn't have any have an easy game. And talking about deaths in general, we have 10 deaths already on Vala, 8 each on the Carrigan, Anubarak and Sylvanas, and the boss in this case dying before he could deliver any critical damage to the core. So right now the blue team, well they already realized that it would be too late at the right side of the map to do any damage to the core, and instead they just moved over and said like, alright boys listen up, we're gonna take the camp instead. That's exactly what they did. Uh, Sylvanas actually going for the Fury of the Storm here, which is also pretty interesting to see that. Uh, we have at the same time down here around there trying to get into a position where he could maybe get a lockdown against an opponent. Two camps are already pushing the top lane. Oh! Abatha dying in this case! Abatha taken out, but Vala dying at the same time. Apparently a bit of a double kill that we just saw there. We're having four heroes for each team still roaming the map, trying to go for the kills up to the top lane. Carrigan is already in position. Vala is moving in down here, together with Nova. There's the egg, the judgment used. Oh, they don't get Bokini. Well, they do actually. Or does he get the well? He gets the well, oh, and he gets away. Oh, no, he doesn't. But he gets taken out by Nova. So far, the blue team's Nova has done a really decent job here. So it's another double kill, and wow. Here comes Silvana. Silvana! In the last second, they take Silvana's out as well. The blue team with three heroes still alive, and 40 kills against 21 is really starting to do some work here, and that core is, of course, endangered already. There are only three heroes alive, but still, with three kills out on the opponent's team, uh, that is a chance that they are going to take. They start to apply the damage here against the shields, but Murky is still there. Murky's back to business, and that puffer fish, oh boy, that could do quite some damage. Here comes the quick stun combo from the uh, Carrigan, but she is able to blink away before she gets killed. We have Wolfie moving in and getting the kill against Sylvana. Oh, and against Nova. Vala suddenly really racking up those kills, but Tony, it looks like he wants to make sure that Vala doesn't survive that. Problem is, he overextends quite a bit doing that, and he might die now too. He uses his blood for blood, but around there is not going to be dropped by that, and the puffer fish. Murky, he doesn't give a shit anymore. He goes for the puffer fish and takes him down. Oh, there comes the kill. But maybe, no, doesn't get Carrigan in the process. Three heroes down. We are 21 minutes into the Haunted Mines game. We're having zero damage taken from each of the cores, but the mines are up again. We can jump back down, and that's exactly what both of the teams are going to try and do. We have currently, uh, yeah, apparently, a new Barak just waiting for here to uh, move down, but at the same time, oh, nice bling. Trying to go for the stun up at the top. Doesn't get that in since Bankai reacts immediately with the ball of the storm. Yeah, we have still three heroes down for the team up here. The death time is, of course, at this point in time, extremely long. And uh, the red team is starting to collect those skulls. They haven't taken out a single keep yet. They actually didn't even take down the fort at the bot lane. So they've really been missing out on a lot of those building kills. But now they're trying to get the skulls, and uh, this is looking extremely good for them. They already have 70 of those skulls, and they're starting to move towards the boss. We're having Nova moving in, entering up at the topper, and so does Sylvanas. Here comes the move immediately. They're trying to take them down. Octograph already used. Carrigan is dead and so is Sylvanas herself. Vala is being dropped once more. 27 kills against 41 at this point and the red team is gaining some momentum. The entire game they've basically been the punching back of the blue team and yeah 
Sylvana's already mentioning to the rest of the heroes, guys, don't go down to the bottom. Like, we really need to make sure that we are staying together right now because this is going to be painful as it is. And this boss is going to do work. I mean, a hundred skull golem, 23 minutes into the game, spawning right over here. Easy has to make sure that he gets away because Abatha is not going to have a fun time if he decides to just use his symbiote in exactly this position. We have Santipa and uh, Bokini already starting to move in up at the top lane. Yeah, especially that dirty, dirty Murky is starting to do a lot of damage. Look at that siege damage that he's dished out already. 160,000. Pretty crazy. The boss here, of course, on uh, zero skull is not going to do a thing to the core. But at the same time, up here to the top lane, yeah, those siege giants are already going down and the 100 skull golem is on the way. Vala is coming back for both of the teams. So we are seeing them moving in right now. There we have it. How much damage can they really dish out here? Murky is already dead. The egg is closed. No, it's not. It's all the way over to the right side. He forgot to replace it. That's bad, of course. And they actually move towards the mid lane. They move towards the mid lane without Murky. They don't want to fight. They go in the mid lane and they start taking the Bruiser camp. The boss, on the other hand, though, is going straight for it. And I mean, a hundred skull golem, a hundred skull boss, that does a lot of work. Just look at Bunkai dropping in hit points here because he got rooted. That was dangerous enough already. The boss is not going to stop here. Takes down the keep and will then move on towards the core. And with five heroes ready again, actually Vala trying to de-push the lane down at the bottom. They need to be careful against the catapults, of course. But maybe a bit of a waste here on the 100 skull golem. I feel like they could have been doing a bit more damage for that. Level 23 versus level 23. Oh, the judgment! YOLOs! Tony YOLOs in no fucks given and gets immediately octo grabbed. And Tyrael, wow, the silence from uh, Sylvanas trying to save him, trying to accomplish something here, but there was nothing that they could do about this. And suddenly they are down without a tank again. Oh, the lockdown again, Snowly. Oh, Carrie again. Oh my god. She got blown to pieces, but so does Vala. Banka is already dead. And now both Valas die, and Sylvanas, she still lives. Murky is with the team once again up here to the top. The copy on Sylvanas is trying to take down another target. And we have Claus on his Nova moving in now as well, going for Murky first. But Anubarak needs to be careful here as well. The kill against Murky, and we are 44 kills against 29 kills in the game. 25 minutes on Haunted Mines so far. And I must say, the one thing that really still surprises me is just the, these damage numbers that we see here. If you look at the siege damage, Murky is pushing in like a maniac. The only one to rival him is Sylvanas for the blue team that we're seeing there. We're having at the same time now, both of the, actually a couple of the players in the mid lane just like trying to capture both of those watchtowers and well, Yogil is very much alone so he needs to be extremely careful, especially since the red team Sylvanas is starting to move in, Dristin is there, Xantippe as well, Abathur is of course helping out but there's a Murky lurking and you need to be super careful with this bad boy always going for the Octograp and trying to take you out. Level 24 versus level 23. And this is a bit of a crazy game. I mean, like, without a healer, you can really tell that this is just a slugfest. Both of these players, it's just, or these teams, it's not about defense anymore. It's not about sustainability. This is just, like, who delivers the damage first. And so far, the blue team has been doing the better job. Right now, we have Claus again trying to go for the kill. What is Vala doing? Running straight into the middle of the fight, using strafe. Both of the Valas going for the strafe. The kill first against Sylvanas, but then Vala dies as well. Once again, they're going straight for it. Murky already dead by their trying. Trying to take down Tony again, and Tyrion doesn't stand a chance there. We have Abatha going for the ultimate evolution again, goes for the copy. Here comes the triple tap, and wow, Tristan saves an Uberak just barely. But we're having the kill thanks to the copy on, uh, yeah, on Nova. Really well done. Good kill. Very, very well done in this situation. The mines not even touched, by the way. They didn't even go into the mines. Oh, and another snipe against Murky. Finally, it's time for the blue team to collect a couple of skulls since we have Bunkai down in the mines going for the first few camps. He's trying to do that as fast as they can. Nearly closing in on those 50 kills, by the way. I mean, just saying. In total, we currently have 78 kills 
in this game. 78 kills. And it's not really often that you see a Nova trying to clear camps in the mines. Usually you try to avoid that as much as possible. But then again, I feel, I guess without anti-armor shells, it's not really going to be a big deal. If you want to have a look at the talents, again, they are very creative since this is still a quick match that we're casting here. But it's a very interesting one as the, at that. And 27 minute games on haunted mines are not really all that common. Once again, we have Nova doing her thing down here and, well, Bankini or Bankai or whatever. Bokini is trying to get a couple of skulls with his good friend Murky. Uh, I feel that Murky should definitely get a pick there. Their pick Murkies are the best. After the top lane, again, another strafe by Bankai. The blue team Bala has been doing a lot of work in this game so far. Oh, but the silence! Counter aggression by Tony going for it, but Kerrigan is some the fun that he did not see. Kerrigan getting the kill against Vala. It's a 5 versus 4 once again. Sylvanas is jumping away with a haunting wave, but here comes Wolfie moving in, and the silence didn't really help. Tyriel is already dead. Here comes a copy on Tyriel now too. Abathur is trying to help out where he can, but in this case, there's very little to do. Ah, uh, the jump by Sylvanas again, but yes, they kill another hero. It's a one versus three trade, and they're going to be happy with that. Currently, in terms of the skulls, we're having 47 against 24, but these catapults are starting to do work against the core. The red team needs to send a few of their players back, or they will start losing hit points here. We have also Anubarak in the mines now trying to get more skulls for his team, and they need those as well. It's a pretty tricky situation, to be honest. Wolfie decides to be the one to move back and take care of this. In the bot lane, or down in the mines we're having now even more players trying to just like grab those skulls for the team and if they take all of them they will be on a 54 um, skull golem which is actually going to be pretty nice the blue team decides to lick their wounds we have claws on uh, nova together with abathar taking down one of the camps but of course they need to wait for the rest of the players especially on sylvanas and tyril who are still dead yeah, Murky biting the dust once again, doesn't really care too much about that. And he's apparently really afraid to put his egg out onto the map, because so far he's been dying quite a lot when that happened. We have by now nearly 200,000 siege damage on Murky, just saying, nearly 200,000. And this is one of the longest games on all the mines like already, I mean we're like nearly 30 minutes in at this point. The bosses are spawning and both of the team are currently deciding like, oh yeah, we have to defend here. We're not going to go for the aggression. We are going to defend against this first. Tony is the only one to suggest that maybe they might go for a push with their own golem, but I guess it's already a bit too late since the golems are spawning and both of them are just starting to focus them down as fast as they can, which will of course finally put Murky over 200,000 siege damage and that's exactly what we are seeing here. In terms of raw hero damage, Sylvanas for the red team is leading the charts, whereas Bala on the blue team is a close second, but not quite there just yet. And well, let's see, 25 versus 25, the levels here on the map, we're having by now 49 kills against 34, that leaves us with 84 kills. 84 kills in a quick match game here on Haunted Mines of all maps. And once again, the team's angling towards the middle of the map where we have the Bruiser camp currently up for grabs. If they get the Bruiser camp here, then, uh, well, you could try and push in a bit with that. It's, it, what does the camp really do at this point in the game? You have so much pressure with your heroes alone. The camps, of course, can push a lane in and then maybe the catapults can take down the shields or even supply some damage to the core itself. But so far, not a single one of these teams has been able to do significant damage to the opponent's base. We still have a fort uh, in the game, by the way. Not for much longer since the siege uh, golems are already there. Oh, Nova is in a bit of trouble up here to the top. Needs to be careful. Nova already dead and that's a bad, bad start. Nova was scouted and now taken out and this is not a good moment for the blue team. They are going to lose this particular camp and they already lost the fort at the bot lane. Maybe the red team trying to be a bit more aggressive even and here comes the Octo grab. They're going for the kill. The stun combo. It's perfect. Tony about to go down after Sylvanas already died. Kerrigan jumping in with Maelstrom and Tony is dead. He's trying to take an Uber with him and oh boy does that thing do damage. The explosion is getting crazy. Bankai down here is being chased away again. Three kills against one. The red team really starting to close their distance in kills a bit. I mean they're not perfectly in position with it just yet. 
but this is doing really well here. This is, I mean, they are really starting to become much better when it comes to those team fights. Their coordination was off in the last few battles, but especially in this one, the stun combo that they've been running was pretty, pretty fun. At the same time now, we're having uh, around there down to the bot lane, there's Carrigan starting to move in as the mines open up in another 17 seconds. They are, of course, very much interested to get those skulls. Let's just be honest here for a second. 32 minutes into the game, these golems are going to be brutal. They scale over time and they are going to be absolutely brutal. So at this point, Tony already advising Nova and Vala to get one of those kills in and that's really something that they need to do. The problem is that Bunker is running straight into a trap but gets away in the last second as Nova is moving in and might try and get a kill against Dristan. There's the Holo already doing its damage. Bunker is moving in again, gets envenomed and oh my god, this is like whack-a-mole what's currently happening on the map here. Every single time a hero appears, a hero appears. He's just getting slammed into the ground. And Claus needs to be careful there. There's the double Nova Corp and Tony's moving in as well. Wolfie is already dead. Kerrigan trying to escape. Up here, Sylvanas is getting judgmented by Tony. And the triple tap takes her out. At the same time, the Abelta Kobe is going for Kerrigan. And Kerrigan is running for her life already. She is scared shitless. And I don't blame her. Kerrigan trying to go for the lockdown. Doesn't get a kill. And uh, in the bottom mines, we have Claus taking out Murky now too. Four heroes taken on, only an Uberak surviving, and Murky of course back to business. 61 skulls for the blue for the red team, and the blue team apparently thinks about to go straight for the core. They type GG already, they want to end it right now. 33 minutes into the game, they still have four heroes alive, and they're going for it. Only an Uberak and Murky are here. One Murky to rule them all. Well, with the help of an Uberak, at least that is. So they are trying to go for it right now. The puffer fish is already there. Murky dying once. We're having Tony and the rest of the team moving in, trying to take down the core. 35 minutes on Haunted Mines, and this could be the end of it. The puffer ship fish is already in position. He gets the Octograph off. And Murky dead once again. Oh, but Sylvanas barely getting away here. And Wolfie is back to business now too. He's moving in with another strafe. And is getting most of the damage in already. 92% on the core. And it looks like Anubara might die. No, he survives for now. Tony is getting killed. He was trying to just like stay here as long as possible. Maybe create some space for the rest of the team. But in this case, they lost way too many heroes. 54 kills against 40. 94 kills in total in this game already. 34 minutes into the match and Vala is in trouble and Uberak moves in Abathar is just barely able to save Vala here look at those damage charts by the way 230,000 damage on Murky this is getting completely insane. 83,000 hero damage on the red team Sylvanas. Once again, we're having Kerrigan jumping in and the comp is there. They take down Vala and now 41 kills for the red team. This game is getting crazy. I mean, it was crazy like for the last 20 minutes already, but this is like getting completely ridiculous at this point. We're having all five of them moving in again. When was the last time you saw a 35-minute game of Haunted Mines with level 26 being reached there with nearly a hundred kills? Once more, the blue team is on the retreat. Oh, who is that? What? <laughs> What the hell was that? Yeah, report to Blizzard, please, because I don't think that that was intentional. Apparently, Tyriel is very eager to finish this fight, was going straight for the core here. Maybe a bit over eager. This is putting YOLO on a whole new level. Abathur is trying to help him out here. Oh, and he comes again, the Octograp! Oh, but Sylvanas gets away. And it looks, or does she? Looks like she could. Tony is in trouble on the other hand. I don't think he really wanted to be in this position. The blue team's Vala is already down. Red team's Vala as well. And this boss is still alive. I mean, just think about it. How long this boss down to the bot lane has been alive here. Oh, Nova! They kill Nova as well. Oh boy, 92% on the core for the red team and suddenly they gain the momentum. Nova is happy that she at least got two heroes. She killed Nova, uh, she killed Vala and also Sylvanas. But still, we're having Murky moving down to uh, the mines and he wants to get those skulls. If that boss happens, I mean, 36 minutes into a haunted mines game, I cannot even imagine how strong that boss is going to be. And if you get a 91 skull uh, golem, then it's going to be brutal.
Tyrael already saying like, guys, don't take any skulls, don't take any skulls, but the kill against Murky, his Octograph just a bit too late there, oh, and Ubarak missing, missing his Barrow Strike, he might be in trouble there, they're already running away, 56 kills against 42, and here we have them once again, trying to jump up and down, getting those kills in, here's Sylvanas getting the Withering of Arrow Shots in, Withering Fire being used once again, Sylvanas jumping in, Judgment being used, and Nubarak! The beetle is dead. The bug has been squished. And this... Could this be the end? Can the blue team maybe start to push the advantage here? They have a nice push going on at the top wave with the Siege Shines. And already in the call again. Don't take those skulls. Even if they take the 30 skulls right now, it's going to be pretty, pretty bad for them. Because that 61% golem is going to wreak havoc at the core. Right now, 26 versus 27, 42 kills against 57 kills. They're going for the kill again. They want to try to end this game now, and it's about time, isn't it? Now, once again, Dristen with the defense here. 28 seconds, Altilla Nuburag is back, and Xantip at the front is going straight for the Octograph again. Vala is moving in with a quick strafe. Doesn't get a kill in, though. Oh, but they get the kill against Vala regardless. Here comes Claus trying to go for the triple tap. Sylvanas now dying as well. Suddenly, it looks like they might see another kill here. Xantip on his murky. He's doing so much work here. Tyrael goes down as Claus on Nova gets a kill for a kill. Abathor, he is really trying to help these boys. He's starting to burrow in and try to just slap them to death, but then decides against it in the last second. He's just barely looking at it and he's just like saying, boys, do I have to do everything on my own? 40 minutes nearly in this game. 27 versus 27. 46 kills against 58. And with four heroes alive for the red team, they decide that it's really time now to get that bloody, that bloody chunk of skulls down in the mines. They want to get this kill right now because this is starting to get a bit nasty. I mean, this game is just like completely like, I, 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 don't, I don't even know anymore. Already Silvana saying, we play too greedy. And I'm like, you think? I mean, the YOLO is real in this game, material with those judgments at times, and at this point, it's just all about the skull stone. Yeah, they want to take it right now, they want to finish this, and if this continues, guys, we could see... Look look at the look at the siege damage here on Vala. She's on 270,000, even our DPSing Murky at this point. We could see heroes with 300,000 siege damage if this game continues, but with a big golem, this has to be it, right? I mean, 77 skulls, this has to be game, doesn't it? 77 skulls, they get more than that, they're gonna be on 91, and of course the blue team is already pretty anxious, and they're like thinking, okay guys, what can we do here right now? Can we go and backdoor? Can we do something here? Should we defend? What exactly are our options? Our opponent has a 91% golem going against us. Can we do anything else but try to outpush them? At this point, they're going for the defense apparently. Nova is already in position, we have Bunkai there, we have everybody in position for this, and yeah, this is Vala just saying, guys, if we start to move in and we lose the fight, we are, we are completely, uh, we're gonna lose the game for sure. At this point, there is still a keep, by the way, there is still a keep here for the blue team, and just look at all of them barreling down on that golem, I can't believe that the red team isn't in position just yet, they're moving in right now, all the way up at the front, we have Kerrigan, Kerrigan, they're trying to end right now, the red team is going immediately for it, we have Kerrigan, where is she going to jump in, she's eating a lot of damage actually, there comes the silence by Sylvanas, very well done, they're trying to get the kill against the Nubara, Kerrigan is super low, they're moving back, look how much damage they're eating already, before the fight even started, but it's 80 percent on the golem uh, on the core and the golem is just going full ham yeah 72 percent 72 percent carry again sylvanas the red team they're jumping in 64 percent here comes the stun hitting one wolfie is trying to get the damage in with another quick multi shot but they need to move back here Oh, Murky is dying again, but the Golem is defeated, 53% on the core. I cannot believe that they made this defense happen. We had the red team just moving in a bit too late, and then they ate way too much damage before the fight even started and didn't get a chance there. Murky has 300,000 siege damage already. 300,000 siege damage at this point. This is completely insane. This is really crazy. And this fort, this keep, it's still alive. It's still alive 41 minutes into the game. We have 46 kills for the red team and 59 kills for the blue team. This is a haunted mines game. This is a game on a map that is supposed to be the fastest map in the entire 
in the entire game. But we have a 41 minute match here. And we will see another mind phase for those two teams. This is getting absurd. This is just getting absurd. 92% on the core against 53%. Up to the top and Uburak is still there. Nova is looking for another opportunity to maybe get a shot in. In terms of deaths, who's leading the charge here? It is actually, uh, yeah, it's Vala still with, with 16. Murky jumping in, Octo grabbing. Oh, the damage with those two strafes that we just saw. Vala is already dead, but the kill against Carrigan, thanks to the triple tap. And Anubarak is, is he going to make it? Is he really going to make it? No, he's not. Tony moves in and takes him down with the help of Abatha. On the other hand, we have Vala. Oh, Nova is eliminated. Oh, and look at Sylvanas with a beautiful move she gets the safety. Tyrael is down once more, but he is going to take Wolfie with him. So it's a double kill once again. Four kills on the blue team, three kills on the red team, 62 kills against 50 kills. We have more than 100 kills by now. 113 kills overall in this game, and the mines are opening up once more. This is going to be the next mine phase, and it is getting... Uh, this is ridiculous. I mean, Murky with 1,700 damage at this point on his Pufferfish. We're having him on 330,000 siege damage, moving in again and at this point Drizzt and Sylvanas of course trying to get additional skulls too. They got a massive golem in the last phase and I was already thinking okay this has to be it. 30 something minutes into the game if you get a 91 skull golem this is game right? But at this point we're talking 43 minutes into the match and still Xantippe and Sylvanas are the only ones down in mines gathering skulls. We have the blue team finally starting to move in and trying to get at least a couple of them but the red team is already so far ahead with this. I mean, they're really starting to move in, taking 62 skulls, and they want to go for the boss now as well. If they go for that boss, I don't even want to imagine how much damage that beast is going to do 44, 45 minutes into the game. Driss barely getting away here. Like, he TPs in the last second as the blue team is trying to go for a couple of kills. And as they already say, the blue team cannot really afford to take those skulls. They cannot afford to take them. Their core is way too far, like way too low in health. And Tony is already uh, like stating the obvious: it's suicide. If we take these skulls, then we are going to suicide and forfeit the game practically. So they need to be careful here. Once again, Tony is starting to move in on his pick. Abathar is trying to help him out. The Octograph, Octograph is there. The focus immediately on him. Here comes the silence. Murky already out of the picture at the same time. Kerrigan is jumping in. Kerrigan gets eliminated before she gets the kill against Sylvanas. And Uberug is once more there, but they kill. Nova first. Oh my god, Jogalon and Sylvanas is getting away again. Tony, Tony, Tony dies, but he moves in to get the kill against the Beetle. Oh, he doesn't get it. He actually doesn't get it. But Abatha, Abatha with the copy goes in and delivers the final shot. Another nice kill by Bankai who takes down Sylvanas in the last second. But Vala, Vala against Murky, Vala and Sylvanas against Murky, but both of them get away. 65 kills against 53 in the middle of the map. Wolfie, what is he going to do? By the way, just stating it, alright? That bloody keep, still alive. 45 minutes into the game and that thing is still alive. Over here, Sylvana is running away from Murky. Murky with 350,000 siege damage. Wolfie apparently deciding that skulls are not really worth taking. He doesn't want to go down into the mines, especially not alone when all of his buddies are dead. And as you can tell, with 128,000 Sylvanas on the side of the red team is currently the top DPS against heroes in this match. We are 45 minutes into this game. Bankai is starting to move in here again. They really want to go for Murky. And Murky hasn't moved his egg in the entire game like he just said. Right, so I'm not going to die here again. Wolfie moving back right now. Murky not going into the mines either. The red team is playing this really cautious right now. They're trying to lay a bit of a trap apparently and Nova is already on the way trying to find out what's happening down in the bottom of the mines. Once of course to double check if there is well, maybe one or two heroes trying to take down that golem, which is not the case. So they are moving back already. Santipe is still there. Are they Are moving into the mines? They have the entire team here. Five people, five players. The red team is ready. The red team is ready for a fight, but down in the bottom mines we have three players waiting. And they are, they've been revealed. They're jumping up to the top now, though. They want to fight here. Abathur is ready, and Nova is starting to move in now as well. They could go for the fight, and they're trying to do that. Both of the Valas trying to deliver their multi-shot with a slow. Carrigan is just waiting for an opportunity to jump in and get the stun lock down together with Anubarak. They move back from the haunting wave. Yeah, it's all about the setup at this point. One good team fight can win you the game.
game. We're nearly 50 minutes into this match right now. Oh, who's gonna take the first shot here? Yeah, it's Nova, Nova. Abathla copy on and over. Trying to go for it. Oh, a great silence. Triple tap being used. And the kill, the kill against Sylvanas. This is the chance for the blue team to maybe finish it out. Judgment already being used. Another triple tap coming into play as Wolfie is being taken out. Three kills already. They take down Kerrigan. No, they don't take down Kerrigan. They take down the bug. The beetle is dead. It's four against eight, four against two. Murky and Kerrigan are still alive. I cannot believe that Kerrigan survived this. Murky is being killed once again. Here's the puffer fish. Wow, Bunker. That was a close one. Abatha all out on the map right now. They want to end it. They want to end it and they're going for the core already. Oh, Murky. Murky is still there. Kerrigan as well. Kerrigan, are they going to go for Bunker? Are they going to go for Nova? Murky is trying to move in. Santipa, can he really defend it together with his body? Bunker is getting really low. Here comes the triple again. But the Octograph interrupting it. The Octograph interrupts it. Kill against Nova. It's 76% on the core. Murky dies once again. Tony is still there together with Abathor. They have those locusts with the siege damage, and this particular catapult is delivering more damage as well. 70%, 70%. Once again, we have Tony moving in. Santipe is trying to help. He's really trying to help out here, and he's done an amazing job so far already. With Carrigan not dying, they can defend once again. 61% against 53. This game is never gonna end. This game is just never gonna end. Once more, we have heroes coming back into play. We have 370,000 siege damage on Murky, 320,000 on the red team's Vala, and this is just getting brutal. But at this point, the self-healing on Tyrael is on 46,000. Abathor has, in terms of healing, 30,000, and the red team is going down into the mines again. They want to go for the golem, and, well, the blue team knows, of course, they cannot allow this. They cannot allow this. There they are, moving into the mines. 50% on the blue team score, 61% on the red team score. They are moving in again. The boss is there. It's a three, it's a four versus one. Murky is starting to jump in the silence. Ah, but the stun is missing as Carrigan enters the fight now as well. Nova isn't there yet. They need to wait for Nova. The blue team is in a bit of trouble here. They have Abathur for the help, but they don't have Nova. Here comes the ball of the storm. Nice arrow here by Juggle. Great wailing arrow in this case. But once more, we see Kerrigan on that Cyberwolf, on that golden Cyberwolf, trying to get the jump. But here comes Nova. Nova coming in. Two Novas, by the way. Oh, and the initiation against Kerrigan and the triple tap. They take it out. The Octograph is there, but it's not good enough. Murky is down and Kerrigan as well. Murky coming back into play. But this could be the kill. This could be the kill against the Red Team. Drist is extremely low. Nova dying first, though. They get the kill against Nova, but can they take down? Wow, Sylvanas gets away. Unbelievable. Down here, on the other hand, it's the blue team, Sylvanas and Anubarak, who both die. Sylvanas up at the top, dying in the mines. And just like that, we have 72 kills for the blue team. And we are seeing 56 kills for the red one. 29 versus 29. The red team is ahead in experience. They're actually really close to level 30 at this point. Extremely close to level 30. And this is just getting... I mean, I mean, like, come on. At this point, this has to be game, right? You have four heroes on the map. Your opponent has three heroes down. Kerrigan is dead for another 17 seconds. But this bloody Murky is just always there for another Octograph. He has it ready once more. And the blue team just says, like, guys, we really don't want to go in there. Keep in mind that we've been... We, we are in a situation where this boss was there for the last... How many minutes? Like, 10? Roughly 10 minutes. But nobody was able to get that boss. At least the red team wasn't. Because the blue team isn't even interested in taking it at this point. Why would they? They know that they can't stop the big golem if it moves up towards their core, but they are trying to end the game again. Retreats are already being called. Nova isn't there yet. Another two seconds on Anubarak and the Sylvanas for the red team, so the blue team has to be extremely careful right now. Abathor is already calling and saying, uh, guys, move back, move back. We cannot stand this. We cannot fight here. We're going to do anything about this. The game is getting uh, absolutely insane here. Xantippe and Wolfie are moving in. We are 50 minutes into a Haunted Mines game. 50 minutes into a Haunted Mines game with in total 128 kills on the board. This is absolutely crazy. This is insane. This is epic. Amazing. Like, this is just an awesome, an awesome match. This is a slugfest. This is just like the entire match, one kill after another. It's Heroes of Akimoto that they are playing. This has nothing to do with a normal match anymore. One of the most epic the quick matches, if not the most epic one that I at least have ever seen. 408,000 
damage on Murky and siege damage. The board doesn't even like work with that much damage anymore. It's just like, okay, I give up. There are too many numbers here. I yeah, that doesn't work. Oh, judgment being used. Kerrigan getting low. Nice silence against the Nubu Rock and the stray for Blue Team Smala is just amazing. Gets that in immediately. The kill against nobody so far. It's actually Bala on the Blue Team side that dies first. But we're having oh that stun from Bokini. The red team, all of them live. What is this? What is this magic? All of them survive this? Wow, that was really, really good. The initiation from the blue team was definitely, definitely nice, especially that silence that we saw from Sylvanas here, yeah, silencing down an Uberak, but they were able to block those triple tap shots and they survive all of them. And right now it's once again, of course, the defense first. The eternal keep is still there. It shall never fall. It shall never fall. If you think in Lord of the Rings that was a pretty epic hold when they were able to defend that keep, yeah, think again. This is better. 52 minutes in the game. We're having uh, right now 415,000 siege damage on Murky. We're having not a single hero under 100,000 damage in siege. And in terms of hero damage, we see two heroes who are closing in on the 150,000. A bit of a trap down here at the bottom. Murky is moving in once again, trying to go for it. Most kills, by the way, still against the red team's Vala with 18. But everybody's pretty close. Oh, Murky is already dead. Everybody moving down to the mines. They play the elevator game. Again, the stun is there. Tony trying to move in. Abatha with a copy on Nova once more. Trying to go for the double snipes here. Oh, and they're going for Karangan, aren't they? They're trying at least to. Oh, and yes, the copy is gone. Nice silence against again. Carrigan did only hit one hero, though. Oh, and the counter silence. Hitting two for now, and of course, also dealing out a significant amount of damage at this point. Yeah, there comes Tony in again, trying to close the distance towards Murky. Not that that Murky kill is going to really help them in this case, but still, they're trying. 73 kills against 58. 73 kills. That's more kills than we usually see in a single match, and that's only the blue team that has this many. We're still seeing that boss down to the bot. Nobody is going to claim this one in this match, I feel. I guess this game is going to end without the boss being attacked or being molested once again. This is the most peaceful time that that golem ever had in his entire life. Siege camp is taken, and the initiation, they're trying to go for Tony, Tony, oh, they don't get him, but it looks like they're going to get a copy of Vala, oh, good luck, that was, yeah, only a copy, not the real one, Kerrigan on the other hand, yes, that's the real Kerrigan, and guess what, she's dead already, and so is Murky, and Anubarak, is he dying, and just barely tunnels away there, but they are not done just yet. The red team is following this up still. They currently have five heroes on the board. They're jumping in once more. Kerrigan is dead for another 50 seconds. Is that the chance that the blue team was waiting for the entire time? Are they going to be able to finish this game? Uh, they're trying at least. They're starting to move in. Here's the copy on Nova. We are having them trying to buy time for Kerrigan to come back into the picture, but the double siege giants here, they are starting to damage towards the shields. It's Murky with a puffer fish once again trying to eliminate them, and and Sylvanas, of course, with her passive locking them down. The blue team is running. The blue team is running. The fear of Murky is real. He walks into the mines and dies once again. 40, 74 kills against 58. Level 30 against 29. And we're having them moving in once more. Right now, the red team has Kerrigan back in just a few seconds. And the attempted kill by the Abathur copy doesn't get it. Abatha doesn't get the copy in everywhere. You just see the retreat signs. This game, one team fight could decide the game. But well, if you learn one thing in this game, then it is that kills don't really matter anymore. Kills, for some reason, just don't matter to these people. I have no idea what kind of match they usually play. I really want to know how much experience you get for a game like that. Because this is just absolutely out of this world. This is a completely different level of play in every single sense of the, well, of the, of the thingy, of the word. Right now we're having 30, I mean, this is, <laughs> I have no idea what this is, but it's definitely not normal. The blue team is moving in once more. They're trying to go straight for that, up to the top, trying to get that early kill, trying to get the early kill here. Maybe with Tony using a judgment, maybe with a double Nova, they can get that kill that they want. Here's already Carrigan. No initiation just yet. Tony, Tony, is he going for it? They're trying to finish it. They're trying to finish it. They have the catapults moving in. The eternal keep is still in position, but over here to the right side, this is where the action happens. 
this is where the action happens and this is where the red team is once again making a stand at the core. Yeah, great stun against the Nova copy, very well executed, doesn't help them, but it looked really good. Once again, Kerrigan is waiting for a chance to jump in, but here comes the copy on uh, Nova. Kerrigan blinks away, the triple tap useless, and one of the rogue abilities is already down. Just for a little bit though, in four seconds it's gonna be back again. The siege shines are starting to move in, here comes the initiation, oh, and Ubaraki went falls deep, he went really deep, way too deep. Gets initiated one against, and the Wailing Arrow takes down Nurki, and they kill Anubarak as well. And Noob is dead, but the counter kill against Vala is immediately answered by a kill against Kerrigan, but it's Sylvanas and Tyrell who die too. Oh my god, the Octograph is happening as well. There has Abathur so far. Un yeah, they didn't really see that Abathur is there. He's starting to burrow back. We're having a bit more damage on the core. Down here, the Catapults are starting to get their shots in. Yes, 58%, 55% versus 53%. Ah, Sylvanas is stating the obvious. This match is just never gonna end. We're gonna sit here in uh, like a day or two and uh, still gonna cast the game. How? How, like, what's the highest level that you ever had in Heroes of the Storm? Well, I guess it only goes until 30, doesn't it? At least it looks like, uh, like it does. Uh, we took down some HP. Oh, uh, congratulations. You took down some HP. Not sure if that really matters in this game. The problem is that with three heroes dead and only Nova and Abathur surviving, we could see this one fall. And if they get the final skulls in, then this game, it has to end, right? I'm not sure if this game can end, but I think if that happens, then the game ends. Right now, having the copy on Abathur again, and, and the snipe against Sylvanas, they get the kill, and Murky is on the run. No more skulls for you, denied, hard. Yep, Murky is dying as well, and they were able to defend once more. Level 30 for both of the teams. Ah, the skulls down here, you can't take them. If you take those skulls, the game is probably over. I'm not even gonna call it anymore. I'm not even gonna say that a golem would end the game because right now I'm not so sure about that anymore. We're having, once again, the blue team trying to go for the camps. Yes, stealing them away. Sylvanas is still dead. 78 kills against 61. 78 kills against 61. We're closing in on the 150 kill mark. We are 58 minutes into this game. On Haunted Mines, people. On Haunted Mines. 58 minutes into the game. And up to the top, the blue team going for it again. Oh, here comes the Octo grab against Tony. Gets stunned, but he survives. And, well, another 40 seconds, and Murky will have another Octo grab. Sylvanas is down for another 15 seconds. Well, at this point, for another, uh, at this point, she's, she's already back. But does it really matter? I mean, I don't even know. They're starting to move in again with another shot here. Here comes Wolfie. Wolfie trying to do his thing. Needs to be careful because the snipes are there. Kerrigan the same. They're both a bit squishy. There, there are no healers in this game. This is the biggest problem for characters like Vala. For characters like Kerrigan who has to jump in and really expose herself to the opponent. Once more the fight happening. The defense from the red team. Can they hold strong? They are trying to. The puffer fish comes in. It doesn't hit anything. Well, actually, it does hit that siege giant, and that siege giant was done within a second. And down here, the lane is starting to push in too. Vala is defending. Vala is defending against the bot lane push, but the shield is already getting really low on the core here. The shield is getting low. The blue team playing it patient this time, very patient. They're trying to move in, but they don't want to overextend. They want to wait for an opportunity to turn things around here. Maybe they can snipe Kerrigan. Abathur is all the way to the right side. He's really trying to help out. I can, per I can feel how he's trying to slap them down. He wants to go in, but he's not allowed to. He's not really allowed to in this case. Once again, to the left side, they're repositioning themselves. Banka is there on his wolf with Vala. We're having Murky nearly on 500,000 siege damage. The same is also true for the red team's Vala here. The pushing power of the blue team. What are they going to do? They're going to go for another camp here. They still have camps on the map. They're trying to take them one after another. And one hour into the game, 60 minutes into a game on haunted fucking mines. Unbelievable. Haunting mine games with 60 minutes down here. Anubara needs to be careful. Careful, Murky as well, he's moving back already. Here's the Puffer Fish initiation. Vala is too far out, Vala is too far out. Vala is down, 
Vala is down, the red team loses Vala. Jogel is trying to escape. Oh, Abathur saving her ass for now. No, she dies. And oh, just like that, it's a four versus four once again. But an Uberak, he might die here as Tony jumps in and drops him. And now we have Sylvanas and Kerrigan still alive. Kerrigan already starting to move back. The Powerfish action by Xantip on his Murky is happening. Tony, Tony, Tony trying to move in and take down Kerrigan. Doesn't get the chance though. But he gets Sylvanas. He gets Sylvanas and they're going for the core on the... Is this the chance that they've been waiting for? Three heroes down for the red team. Murky still there. Murky with a puffer fish. He nearly takes down the knights. Kerrigan needs to be super careful. She can't die right now. Kerrigan, they have to save her. Here comes the lockdown. Tony with the octograph. Tony, Tony is not dying. They save him. Abathur. All hail Abathur. They save him, but Kerrigan jumps in and finishes him off. But the core, the catapults, the core. It's over, isn't it? No, no, not yet. 5%. percent one zero. Game over. The blue team takes it the blue team takes the game after 61 minutes oh my god <laughs> gg a haunted mines game that lasted more than an hour and had 146 kills in total absolute crazy what we just saw there and i personally thought about like five times that the game would be over but it just kept on going and at some point you have to wonder like is this game ever gonna end or will it just continue on for like for years like this the game is over and the blue team was able to win it in the end so congratulations to them but i hope that i didn't promise you guys too much i hope that it was entertaining i certainly had a blast casting it and it was quite a lot of fun to just just watch that craziness going on and on and on. If you liked the game, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Make sure that you also subscribe to Color TV if you haven't done that yet. And guys, I'm going to see you with more Heroes of the Stormy on the channel in the near future. Have a good day. Bye-bye.